Hello everybody, my name is Josh and welcome back to the channel. Today we are continuing making our beat. That's right, this is part two. In part one, we were focused on the drums. We got the kick, the snare, the hi-hats, the claps, the percussion, all of that laid down. And along the way, we learned some little tips about FL Studio and how you can actually lay that down with some simple piano roll tips and some playlist tips and how you can use the tools and everything. In part two, we're going to be focusing on the instrument section. So that means anything other than drums, whether it be acoustic instruments, synthesizers, any added atmospheric effect that we have put in it, is going to be included in this video and I'm going to do an in-depth explanation of how I laid everything down. Which leads me to the next point I should uh, bring up before we get started. I kind of already finished it. What? What I mean by that is, I mean exactly what I said, I kind of finished it. <laughs> let me, let me explain. While I was off camera, I did the beat. I, I did a lot of it. And by a lot, I mean pretty much all of it. I got to thinking, when I make the video for the instrument section, 99% of it will be me sitting here looking through presets and switching instruments and saying, nah, this isn't the right one. This sounds cool. And then finding out it wasn't, then having to replace it with instruments. And it'll just be a huge hassle, not only for me, but for you to have to listen to. So don't worry, I saved you of all that. You should thank me. What I've done is all the boring stuff off camera. So that means I search through the presets, that means I look through all the instruments, I pick the ones that I like and I think work with this beat specifically. I've put it all down so that I can just take this entire video, take all the time in it to just explain to you how I did it. So without further ado, let's jump straight into the project and I'll start explaining everything that I've done so far off camera. So as you can see right here, the project has changed a lot. So basically what I've done is I've divided everything into four sections just for my sake having to uh, go with my workflow here the drums I made an empty track so I can just kind of zip up all these right here that's basically what we've done in part one all I've done with the drums off camera is I've added two extra percussion tracks and three extra cymbal tracks so basically I've just added five drum tracks while off camera which isn't a lot it was just a couple extra things that I thought should be in there. Section two here is the instrument section, which is the chord progression that I got. I'm gonna explain to you how I got that. The chord progression, uh, instrument one, instrument two, the 808, which is the bass, like I mentioned in the previous video. A couple little extra side instruments here, some strings, and a little uh, synthesizer pluck. So not that many instruments. I thought that for something like this, I shouldn't go all crazy on the instruments so that it could just be easier to explain. The third section here is the vocal section. And don't worry, I didn't sing on this. These are just some stock vocals that I got from one of my sample packs over here. Um, I made sure they were in the same key of the song, and if they weren't, then I pitched them up to that key. I thought that they sounded really cool to be sort of an ambient background instrument. Um, cause you know vocals are instruments too, so I'm just gonna include all of this in the instrument video. It's just a couple tracks, some layered harmonies, nothing too complicated. Once I explain it, you'll all see just how simple it is. The final section down here is the effects section, which is literally just two tracks of vinyl stacked on top of each other, and a volume control automation down here, along with a filter modulation, which said out loud kinda sounds like rocket science, but <laughs> it's not. It's really just simplest. This is like the simplest part of the whole song right here. But yeah, those are the four sections of the entire song zipped up. It's approximately 22 tracks. And another thing to note is I changed the tempo. As you saw in video number one, I set this number up here to 110 beats per minute. Well, after listening to it off camera and messing with it a little bit, I decided that 100 was actually a better number. It was a, a little bit slower, not too much of a difference but enough to make me say, yeah, that sounds epic. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna let you guys listen to it all the way through so that you guys can just get an idea of what it sounds like and what we're about to get ourselves into. I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you that there is some things I've done in the mixer and I'm not going to get into that in this video. The mixer and everything that we're gonna do is going to be in the third video. That video will deal with effects and post-processing, all that stuff. 
But for now, we're just gonna stay focused on the playlist and the instrument section. So without further ado, let's listen. So yeah, that's what it sounds like. Uh, that's all the instruments together, all the vocals and all the effects. At the beginning, you heard that vinyl crackle. I thought that was a nice little thing to add at the beginning. And I might add some other things, but for right now, this is probably 95% done when it comes to the playlist part. I haven't really messed with the mixer that much, but without further ado, let's start uh, examining what I've done with the instruments. So as you can see right here at the instruments tab, this is the very first thing with an actual clip in it. This is just an empty track right here, just a placeholder. But this right here is actually the very first instrument. It's actually just a sample that I used from a semantics pack. That's how I got the entire melody idea, and that's really all it ever takes to get a melody idea. You refer to one of those cool sample packs, unless you have an idea of your own, which is even better. But for something like this, I said, I can just get something from a sample pack and it'll sound epic. And their stuff really does sound cool. But this right here is... That's the original sound of the sample. And as you heard, I really didn't tweak nothing with that. Uh, that's the original sound because it just sounds so good. There's nothing that really needs to be tweaked. Um, I added my own layer instrument over that, which is the Pad of Dreams here. I added this, but that's the, the main focus, that's the main idea of where I got the melody and the, the chords and everything for the entire foundation of the song. So without that, it probably wouldn't have turned out the way it did. I, I would have come up with something myself eventually, but I did this just to go ahead and come up with something really quick for you guys. So that's instrument number one, Cymatics Chords, from the Cymatic Pack Chaos, I believe. I got it from there, just dra dragged in the sample, and got it fit with the song, sounded great. The second instrument here is the one that I've added to layer that instrument from Cymatics, uh, the Pad of Dreams. <laughs> that's what I named it, yes, it didn't come like that. I thought that it sounded cool, it's really sort of the same kind of sound, but it's just something to make that cymatics sample even fuller. So yeah, that sounds pretty cool. The instrument itself is called Pigments from Arturia. Let me pull it up here. As you can see, there's a lot going on. Even I haven't mastered this synthesizer yet, but I've got a good hang of it. It's a lot to it, but I just know the basics and I, I the sound didn't... This is the interface right here for the plugin and... As you can see, it sounds like that. I actually played those chords on the piano. This didn't have any MIDI information, so I actually had to listen to it over and over again and pick out the chords with my ear. That's the kind of stuff that I wanted to make sure wasn't in the video. Me just sitting there listening to it over and over again for 30 minutes, trying to come up with something and then have to have all that footage to cut out. So it was a lot easier to just have the time to do it myself. And luckily, it worked out amazing. This synth right here, it didn't originally sound like this because it was a preset that I just kind of used 
Yeah, this synth comes with several, several hundred presets. And I used one of them, it was kind of more of a harsh sound. You'll see that if I go into the effects section here and turn off this filter, there it is. You'll see that when I start tweaking those knobs, that's more of like what it originally sounded like. A little bit harsh, it's kind of like a, a sawy sound. And all that a filter does really is it takes that harsh buzz sound, like if you turn it all the way up, all it does is it really muffles it. And you'll say, well, muffled sounds don't really sound too good. That's what most producers try to stay away from, right? What I've heard. Well, yes, you don't want a muffled song. You don't hear muffled songs on Spotify unless it's like a lo-fi, but then that's on purpose. Well, for certain synths, that's how you get your pad sounds, is you turn the cutoff down. And that's a big part of how you get those amazing luscious sounds in modern day songs, is you have to have the filter. And all I did here is I automated this thing, that's why it's moving right here. Normally you'd have to move the cutoff on your own, just like I just did, the knob. But you'll see that it's kind of moving on its own here, doing its own little thing. Which is why it's fading in and out, see? All I did is I took the cutoff knob and I automated it, as you can see, when I hold my cursor over this, it highlights LFO2, which means that it is automated to that. So when I click LFO2, you'll see that FX5 Mod 1 has been automated here, which is why it's moving with an LFO. And basically what an LFO is, is you know you have to turn the knobs, like I just did, I showed you, I turned the knobs and it adjusted the sound. Basically, it adjusts the knob for you, and it does it automatically in the background. So while you're playing the instrument, it's in the background turning the knob. Just picture that there's a dude inside the computer that is literally just turning the knob for you. Up and down. Up and down. And whatever you link that knob to, it'll turn. Because that one knob can control multiple things. You can link several things to this LFO right here, whether it be that cut off or, or this control right here or this control doesn't matter. If you link it to that LFO, it's going to move just like that LFO is doing. And it'll do this exact same thing, depending on the control that you use. So yeah, basically all that has been done in this instrument to get that soft pad sound is I just tweaked the cutoff for filter number one, tweaked the cutoff for filter number two, went to the effects section, added a filter of my own, I wanted to have enough filters to make sure that that harsh sound wasn't coming through. Because I wanted it to sound as much like that original cymatics thing. That's not harsh at all, that's not very buzzy. So I wanted to match that, and I got this. Which all it took was me adding uh, a filter, an extra filter on the entire thing and modulating it to an LFO, which is why it's fading in and out with that sound. Like why it's moving up and down. So that's really that entire instrument covered. There's not much more to say about it. I'm not going to get into all of this because it really doesn't matter and it's not important. It came like that, like I said, I chose a preset and I just kind of tweaked what needed to be tweaked and I forgot the rest. So that's the Pad of Dreams. I named the preset and all that jazz. <laughs> you may be wondering why there's a track under it called the Pad of Dreams and why there's a MIDI track under it. Well, if I play it, you'll see why. Watch this meter particularly up here. Yeah, that doesn't sound like anything fun, does it? It's not. It's the CPU. I'm running a Core i7 with uh, a 9th gen i7 in this laptop, which is a pretty high-end uh, chip, a CPU, a pretty good CPU, and that one instrument can take that CPU, that processing, and jack it straight through the roof. Just that one instrument. That's how, how much is going on in that one instrument. So I actually had to take that instrument the uh, raw MIDI which is playing from this instrument right here and I had to export it as audio when it's exported as audio it's not playing from this instrument anymore it has become its own thing 
so no processing really needs to be done in order to play it as an audio file like that yeah the cpu numbers are still pretty high but i'm playing all the instruments at once not just that one so that's the only reason that i really had to export it if it wasn't for that i would have left this midi but cpu wouldn't allow it but anyway the next section the third instrument that we're going to go to now is the 808 the instrument that everybody loves the bass pretty much is a bass and a kick kind of combined there's not really much going on here with it it's uh pretty simple straightforward let me find what track is on track 14 and it's literally that what you saw right there that's the instrument hub for it it's the sampler just like the kick the kick as you may have seen and all those other instruments for the drums they all look like this in a sampler all i did is i drug in a 808 sample i just uh dragged that sample in and went straight from there i mean there wasn't much i mean just look at this instrument hub compared to this instrument hub like there's a lot going on there and obviously it's because that's a synthesizer that has many controls going on and this is just a little old sample but don't underestimate it just because it's boring interface a boring interface here and just a squiggly line that looks like it's going up and down up and down all that it's actually a really good sound and it shouldn't be taken lightly So as you can see right there, this is the piano roll, the MIDI data for the 808. And I don't have it stretched all out. Normally for a synth bass, you'd have to continue the note and to have it like, duh, duh. You'd have to stretch it out and make sure that it connects with each note. But see, watch this. Even though I've stretched it out, listen to what it does. It didn't continue it. It didn't hold that. Duh. It kind of faded out. That just is because the sample. I can make this super short. See? Super, super short. And it still plays for the exact same amount of time. It's because it's already been pre-sampled like that. And that's really how 808s are supposed to be. They're not supposed to hold for that long. That's why people love 808 so much. That's why producers love 808s. Is because it's not necessarily about the sound as much as it is about the, the punch. The that, um, that amazing beat that it goes along with when it hits straight with the kick. And that's what I've done. I've made sure that it lines up straight up with the kick so that it gets that extra punch. Because the 808 on its own without the kick is... That's all right on its own, but when you line the kick up with it, that sounds epic. So basically, I did, I did tweak a couple of little things in the sampler. Um, one thing you'll notice is that on this note right here, there's one little thing right there, and I'm going to let you hear it. I had to go into the sampler right here, and in this tab right here, I think, miscellaneous functions, I enabled Porta mode. No, not Porta John. Porta, which means Portamento. And that means, essentially, that when you go from one note to another, it slides into it. Hence this slide knob here. So if I switch it off, you'll see what it does. It goes da 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 da. So straight single notes up, down, and there's no real glide into it. This is what this entire section here is for in the sampler section. It is to really control the amount of slide you want into it. And even though the 808 itself didn't slide in the original creation of the sample itself. I added the slide using FL Studio's sampler. And it's really simple. I mean, you just hit one button and then it's straight from here. I can control and dial in the amount of slide I want. You see, if I start out with none, there's a little bit, not much at all, but it's only because I've enabled that button right there. If I turn it up to halfway, big difference, right? Now slides. I think that sounds really good. Now, if you do this, it kind of gets overboard. It doesn't even have the time to slide all the way up because you've basically enabled it to slide at such a slow rate. You should only do that if you're trying to replicate the THX sound. So 
for this, I'm thinking about keeping it right around here. That's a good amount of time it takes to slide up, and it gives it a nice vibe, I think. While still keeping that punchiness, that's so important when you're doing an 808. You want it to be loud and punchy, along with the kick. For the 808 pattern 1, it just does that, it repeats itself. Let me solo it. Stops for a little bit there, and then it comes back in. So see how I did that there? I took it down like a full octave just by simply walking it down. That's a classic move right there, right? Along with the kick. Yep. I love that, especially going with uh, all the other instruments. Yeah, I like the sound of that. I, I, I played that. Uh, I immediately heard it and I was like, I need to add that definitely. And uh, basically the 808 is one of the simplest instruments in here. Not much to do. Uh, as you saw, I really just tweaked one control. Uh, other than that, it's really just the knowing and uh, just the knowing not to compromise the punchiness of it and the loudness, like I said. Other than that, 808 is super simple, bass is super simple. Uh, let's move on to the next instrument, which I have titled Womp. <laughs> For good reason when you hear it. It's, it's literally just two notes here, and it's super simple. It's going to be the shortest thing I go over, probably. Uh, it's literally just... Uh, let me find it here. It's literally just a serum patch right here. Uh, serum is an amazing synthesizer. A uh, lot of dubstep uh, electronic producers use it. Uh, one of the most popular synthesizers of all time. Easy. But the reason I named it Womp is... Kind of makes that noise. In the higher pitches, it may sound kind of stupid, like... Like, that sounds flat annoying, doesn't it? But what if we took it down an octave? Or, or another octave? Or, or another octave? You get that nice, crunchy bass, that, that dry bass sound. The original preset doesn't have it pumping like that. I added an effect, and I'll turn that off just to demonstrate the original sound. That's the original sound. You can go in here and tweak the speed of it. Just the rate right here. And this is another LFO. Essentially, like I said, the guy turning the knob. That's all an LFO is, is that this control is mapped to six things. You can see the things here it's mapped to. Bunch of different stuff, filter cutoff, uh, wavetable position, uh, all sorts of stuff. Which is the cause of these things up here moving whenever I'm playing it. You see that little thing right here? That's a wavetable. That's actually one of the sound generators. Sort of like how your kick, like I mentioned, is like a bunch of squiggly lines. Well, this right here is your squiggly lines. All this right here is just in a green shade, nothing else. That That's literally the same principles there. That's a saw, a saw to square, a saw rounded to square. That's a square right there. That's that's called a square wave. A saw is more like this, a triangle sort of a shape. And a sine is a sine wave, S-I-N-E. It's more of like this, uh, sort of a, a up and down, sort of like a wave. While the other ones are really sharp and jagged on their edges. So, usually the more jagged edged ones are more harsh in the sound and require filters to tone them down. Sort of like I demonstrated in the Pad of Dreams. But, in this case, we want it to have that sharp sound. And I'll demonstrate exactly why I added this effect. Make sure that rate is back up. And it's super short, as you see, two notes right here. So when I play the song, you I'll point out exactly when it comes in. Right here. Right there. And without it... Like, that sounds good and all, but... I heard that, and I, I was like, yes. But I've been trying so hard to make a sound that's just like this. And I failed all the way up until I found this sample from Cymatics. They're the ones... They've always been the ones to rescue me <laughs> when it comes to stuff like this. Oh, 
um, right under it, I have an automation that is controlling the volume. So without it, it would do this. Let me uh, turn it off. It kind of leaves a, a reverb behind. That little tail end, I don't want that. So I use this Fruity Balance. It's basically another volume knob. That's all it is. And soon, as, as soon as I activate that, that track right there, uh, I've, I've rated this right here to zero. So that's at zero. That, get, that goes to zero. So as you can see, it goes up right here, right about when this starts, which is the actual note hit. And this is the automation data. And you see it, it cuts off quite sharply right there. Uh, it's an abrupt end into the sound so that no reverb can get out and leak and, and muffle the sound up. So here's uh, before and after. Before Fruity Balance. After Fruity Balance. Immediate cutoff. And it's right to the point. That's what I want. I want that dry sound. Uh, listen to it one more time with everything. That just sounds epic. I can't get over that. That's the one part that I listen to and I'm just like... Um, I'm, I'm having too much fun here. Okay, next one, Session Strings. This is just a string instrument. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's Session Strings from Native Instruments uh, Contact. You can see right here, uh, Session Strings. It's... Um, I have it set to Pizzicato right here, which means that it's going to be kind of plucky when it's played. So... That's the beginning, right, as everything is kind of ramping up before the kick comes in. Just something a little go with it. I'm pretty sure you guys caught that. Um, there's not really much I did to this instrument. I mean, what is there to do? It's, it's strings. I mean... It's not like a synthesizer, I can't go in there and, and really change much. Just the room, the reverb, and everything in this effects panel, but other than that, not much to change. The next instrument here is, I just named it Pigment Pluck, and I know you're thinking, well, you already had pigments in it one time. Well, I used it again. Kind of plucky, kind of like a, a broken toy. That's kind of what it sounds like. As you can see with the little star up here, that means it was tweaked. I did do a little bit of stuff to this. I think I just made it shorter using these envelopes here. If you raise the release, then when you touch it, the sound takes long to fade. See there? See, I, I'm, I'm clicking it and immediately letting go. And it's still fading out. I want it to be short, so I just turn that release down. Yeah, it's really short and cut off now doesn't stay out long like this. I want it to be super short. That's all that I did to this instrument. And that goes right along with strings. Um, there's not really much there to go over, except that um, in both of these cases, the strings and that pluck are playing the exact same MIDI data. If I solo both of them, you'll hear. I just thought it'd be cool to um, layer those, it sounds really cool together. Really cool, and these automations right here, the same thing as Womp, it's literally just a volume, so that it's a, a confirm that nothing will go into the this part, because everything is supposed to cut off, it's supposed to just be the snare. And that vocal, but... I don't want any instrument reverb, any sort of release from an envelope that is lagging and fading into that empty spot right there, because that's the part where everything is like a... <gasps> so yeah, that really covers the entire uh, section of instruments. I named this entire section instruments just for my personal workflow. I needed to make sure that I didn't lose track of where I was at. But these are all instruments that I played on the keyboard or that actually needed tweaking with a synthesizer or something. But I named all this vocal just to kind of separate it. I knew that it would be a lot, but I'm also gonna go on ahead and go over it just because it's really simple. It's just vocal chops. This is literally, I did nothing to this really. I think I changed the pitch, yeah. I pitched it down and I just stretched it to fit with the tempo. 
kind of. Don't feel good. Just a simple vocal preset right there. Just something I thought it'd be pretty cool to go in the background of it. And the same thing is over here after the first part of the beat from this right here. There's no vocal here. There's no vocal there until you get right here. That's literally the same thing except I pitched it up. I pitched it back up. It was all the way down here. I just put it back up here. And that's literally it for that track of the vocal. Um, it's really simple, nothing else. For this track right here, that definitely didn't sound like that. I'll tell you that right now. That took a lot of work to get the sound just the way I wanted it. As you can see, this has one, two, three, or five different effects on it. Without those effects, it sounds like this. I had to go in there and find exactly what effects I wanted, the exact settings that I wanted for each effect to make it sound like this. And wait, I, I have to have this automation track just so that you can hear it too. There's some distortion that I added, which is all that this track is right here. It's nothing but an automation clip, which is just why there's a bunch of squiggly lines there. Uh, as you can see, as they go up, you'll hear a change in the sound, and it's distortion. You see it kind of got a little bit harsher there? It's just distortion. That's really the entire thing for that one piece of a vocal right there. And to be honest, there was really no organization when it came to this right here. I just threw it together because... I was just so excited to lay down this vocal. All of these vocal tracks, they're just different types of vocals, uh, may not be the exact same, but it's all on the same track with the same effects. Um, that's why I told you guys to go over it. It would be really simple because there's not much happening here. It's it's just different vocals, of course. they saying different things, ooing, uh, humming, uh, eyeing, just doing different stuff like that. But other than that, same post-processing, same sound. Um, except I did add harmonies. There's four of them over top of each other, of the same vocal. So, it's like this. To go with, like, this cool synth. See, I added the my own harmonies, just to give it a touch of creativity, because this is a sample of its own from Cymatics. There's not much that you can do to it. I liked the melody itself, and that's why I went with it. But as I said, like this, whenever you're using a sample that was made by another company, there's not much creativity that you put into that. So you have to find something. In this case, this was it. To add the vocal, to add my own harmonies, I felt like that was really cool. To have my own flair in the background. That's the only other instrument that is allowed to have volume and to continue while that empty part is going on. I thought that would be a nice addition right there, even though everything else is empty, to only have that one thing left in there. That would be like an epic moment when everything else is not playing. Only cymbals are playing and reverse cymbals right here. That, that's the only other thing that is allowed to play to lead into it. I figured since everything was getting ramped up and everything was getting the hype and needed some time to soak in, all that epicness needed to digest from your ears to your brain, to your eyes, to your chest. And then once it finally gets to your feet, the very last thing, your entire body is infected with epicness. Then, get another dose of it. It's just so much epicness that even I couldn't handle it at first. But yeah, uh, all I did was copy these harmonies and right when everything comes in and hits with the snare on the second part. I add the exact same harmonies. As you can see, I just copied and pasted them right here just for it to come in a stab of harmonies just like that. And then I continue the main vocal.
right here, the last change that I did with the vocal, these three right, or these four right here, they're all volume knobs. And they are unique to each one of these volumes. As you can see, that's volume 11, 12, 13, and 14. I had to make each one of these unique because it's the exact same vocal sample, but each one has a different automation to them. Look at this pitch control right here. It is up all the way. But look at the next one. I had to turn it down just a little bit. I had to turn this one down just a little bit. And I had to turn this one down just a little bit. Because at the end, right when everything ends and it goes back to the start, you'll notice that there's harmonies right there, very subtle. I thought that was just so cool. And it's so quick, it's, it happens so fast that it, you don't even realize that it happens unless you listen to it over and over again and seriously analyze it. All it is is just... And I couldn't play that on the keyboard. I had to listen over and over again and pick it out with my ear and just use this one knob. Couldn't even play it on the piano. So I just faded that in. Go straight back to it. It's like you never even knew what happened. I thought that was such a cool thing. That vocal really adds a lot. If you took that vocal out, I'm not even sure if it would be the same song, to be honest. I, it definitely wouldn't. Just look at how much of a part. It was so big of a part for um, all of this, for this entire song, for that vocal to be in there, such a huge part that I thought it was best to make a, to make it a part of its own. That's why I separated it from the instruments, even though it technically is an instrument. So yeah, that was really the entire section of instruments right here. That's the bulk of what I did off camera. Other than this right here, the uh, vinyl right here, which is super simple. I mean, nothing to explain here really except, um, this it comes in it's kind of, it kind of comes in and fades with this volume control right here and i put a filter on it so look at this knob right here remember the cutoff it's very very subtle even though the sample here continues i completely shut the volume off at bar number between uh, bar number eight and bar number nine, right when everything sh uh, shuts off with the volume. And it doesn't continue. I can actually delete all these patterns right here because they make no sound. Just a, a nice little subtle uh, sound effect in the beginning. I thought it would be nice to add. Without it, it's really just kind of empty. It sound like this. Not, I mean, that's pretty good on its own, but you know, you need something to fill it up to make it have that vibe where you're not really expecting it. Because right now, right now, it could be a lo-fi song, and you don't even know it yet. Until this part kicks in. That's when you know it. Oh, junk, it's happening. <laughs> but... Yeah, that, that's everything that I've done um, when it comes to actually laying down stuff in the playlist. That's everything that I've done off camera. It's everything that I would have eventually done on camera. If I had done this on camera, I probably would have gotten something along these lines with the same result. It definitely wouldn't have sounded like this because I wouldn't have sat here and filmed for 11 hours just watching me click through presets and edit stuff. But I figured me going on ahead and laying this down, it, it made things a lot simpler. I think it did. Um, my explanation may not have been on point because right now it's uh, around 11, 11.30, and I'm getting kind of tired. So um, my mind is kind of like... Um, I'm going to deal with the mixer everything next time. As you can see, there's not many effects. I haven't done that. That's the one thing I haven't really focused on off camera mainly because I just wanted to get this as fast as I could to give it to you guys. I've uh, been really busy in between projects and stuff, but I really want to make sure I get this done for you guys. I really think it's important that you guys see this because if any of you want to do music, it's important that I do my part at least as being somebody that you guys watch. And if there's a chance that even if you look up to me in any sort of way, then I want to make sure that 
I do what I can to encourage you and show you exactly how I do it so that you can do it too. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it guys. Um, I'm pretty sure that before the series ends, I'll be going over everything I've done 100%. Again, just a, a quick summary of everything. But for now, I'm signing off and I hope that you guys have a good night, a good day whenever you're watching this. I hope you're having a good one. <laughs> but I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, peace out.